Hey everyone, uh, this video is going to be a review of a few topics that are relevant to the first set of FRQ questions that I assigned to you. Uh, the focus of these videos is pretty much going to shift into full-time AP test review from now on, so hopefully I can get you prepared as well as possible for the AP test. Okay, so uh, in this video I'm going to go over three main topics. Uh, the first one is going to be uh, data linearization and analysis. So this is a really uh, general topic that will probably uh, apply to any sort of experimental design FRQ question that you would see on the test. Uh, so the idea is we want to uh, be able to you know, set up in our minds some sort of experiment and think about how we would collect data and how we might uh, analyze and interpret those data. So the example I've chosen here, we have uh, something like a, a ball on a string that's just spinning around in a circle. We want to think about what's some sort of experiment we could set up that will allow us to uh, look at the relationship between uh, a couple of different uh, physical parameters here. So let's say we have uh, an object here with some mass m. Now let's say we're going to spin around in a circle with radius r. Let's say r is fixed. And it's going to rotate with uh, some speed v as it goes around in a circle. All right. Uh, so what kind of experiment could we set up here? Uh, let's say we want to uh, look at the relationship between the speed of this ball going around in a circle and the tension in this string. So let's say you know, we have some sort of piece of equipment here in the center, uh, maybe some sort of force probe that allows us to measure the tension in the string. So there's a number of uh, variables that we could measure here. So let's think about how we would set up an actual experiment. Uh, so in terms of data that we could collect, we could uh, collect data from the force probe that would be measured in Newtons. Uh, we could uh, measure as our, uh, say, dependent variable, the time that it takes this thing to make one revolution or the period of the motion and that would be measured in seconds. Uh, so this would maybe be our initial data table and then uh, some other quantities that we might be able to measure or derive from these values. Uh, we can measure the radius of the loop pretty easily and then if we have the period of the revolution and the radius we could calculate the speed of this object in meters per second. So just call these variables f, uh, t, r, and v. So we would maybe set up a, a blank data table like this in the FRQ question. Uh, so now maybe the question is, uh, you know, what can we do with these data? Uh, so uh, let's say we're prompted that we want to find some uh, uh, some sort of relationship between the force and the velocity. So here is where we would have to apply some of the stuff we know from uh, other units. So this is circular motion, so a little bit of review of circular motion for you. Uh, we know that if something is moving around in a circle at a constant speed, so that's what we call a uniform circular motion, we know that the net force on this object uh, must be equal to the mass times the velocity squared divided by the radius. And that's also going to equal the mass of the object times the acceleration. So we can measure the force from the force probe, that would be our F net, and then we have uh, velocity and radius in our data table, so we can see those things all sort of fit into this equation here. So maybe the idea behind this experiment is we're going to try to find the mass of the object by looking at our force and velocity data. So if this is the equation that the data obey, then we can uh, reason that if we were to plot, say, force on this axis, actually, uh, yeah, let's put force on this axis in Newtons and velocity in meters squared here. Uh, if we took a number of data points, uh, they would not form a straight line, uh, but they should curve upward, something like this. So this would look parabolic. All right, so how do we linearize this? Well, this looks sort of like a y equals x squared equation, where really y is our force, 
and x is our velocity. So if uh, the force is proportional to v squared, then we would want to plot that instead. So we'd make a second set of axes here, put force on the vertical axis, and split v squared on this axis. And if we do that, our data should fall closer to a straight line. Uh, let's try that again. There we go. Okay, so uh, we know that if we plot force versus v squared, uh, we should get a straight line since force is proportional to v squared. Uh, now another question is, we could ask ourselves, what does the slope of this line represent? So if we were to actually do this experiment, we could you know, get values for these data points, we could plot the specific line, and we could actually get an equation for this line, and we could see that the slope was some number. And that number uh, will tell us something about uh, this system. All right, so if we look at this equation, uh, the equation should obey this form, uh, f equals mass times v squared over r, or we can sort of group it like this. So it's equal to mass divided by radius times v squared. So this is going to be the slope if we plot force versus velocity squared. So that's our answer to this last question. The slope is equal to mass divided by radius. So if we were asked to you know, come up or describe a technique to determine the mass of this object, you know, your basic answer is going to be you know, run this experiment, measure force and velocity for a number of trials, and uh, plot those on a set of axes. And then using this equation that we know, force equals mv squared over r, we can uh, relate those two values to some of the other physical constants here. And we know that if we plot force on one axis and v squared on the other axis, then what's left in this equation, which is m divided by r, is going to be the slope of our results. So we can find uh, the mass if we know the radius or vice versa. All right, so uh, 